That sigh is a warning, ladies and gentlemen. That is a warning of how you should feel. It's how you will feel once this video is over. I can assure you. As it were, this is Hagbard Selene here again on another beautiful day, and I have found the bottom of the barrel here. This young lady is attempting to equate the lyrical content of some just non-rap songs. She has specifically chose pop punk, but the source that she's using has just chose non-rap songs that highlight the misogyny in them, and in the genre of pop punk in specific. Now, the, the examples they find are ridiculous on the face of it compared to rap music if they can even ever be called misogynistic. I'm not going to expound on too much here. I just wanted to give you an idea of what we're in for. Do you guys know what I hate? From the history of your content, I would say everything. Well, besides everything... Oh, sorry, didn't mean to talk over you and mansplain your own position. I hate double standards. Well, at least you don't hold any of those yourself. Especially when those standards are primarily based on race. I agree, we shouldn't have double standards. There probably shouldn't be women or minority college funds, but that's not what you're talking about, is it? Doesn't it seem like hip-hop takes so much of the brunt of misogyny these days? Everyone's always pointing fingers. Anti-feminist, anti-womanist. Hip-hop takes a lot of the shit when it comes to all that finger-pointing. Let's ignore the fact that the very reason why people like myself point out the fact that hip-hop has a lot of misogynistic tendencies is to point out the fact that you're hesitant, if not outright fucking cowardly, about pointing it out. Of course, your response to that will be to point out absolutely everything else. Shocking. Um, what is misogyny, though, you may ask? A dislike, contempt of, or ingrained prejudice against women. Did you think that was a difficult question, dear? As defined by the Webster Dictionary, it is simply put, a hatred of women. That is probably all your poor little dear head could manage. Sometimes, you're not even consciously aware of it. You just do it because it evolves from learned behaviors, societal norms, and gender norms. I'll take a buzzword salad for 100, Mr. Trebek. I mean, like, you know, don't get me wrong at all. I am fully aware of and disgusted by hip-hop's anti-woman lyrics and the men who are so unbelievably prevalent in the genre. Like, they're literally everywhere. They're so heavily involved in the culture. God, I know those filthy fucking men with their sexual desires. It's horrendous. Rick Ross was dragged and lost endorsements over that fuck-ass You Ain't No song. And when he basically said in his lyrics that he date rape a chick when confronted about them, he didn't even apologize for them. He apologized for us taking it offensively and that he would never disrespect us. Since she seems to want to make only a handful of citations in her rap section, I'm going to assist her in this process and make a few of my own. Ladies and gentlemen, I can assure you that not one song has a lyric in it anywhere close to the lyrics that she's referring to here, which I'd note she doesn't actually explain. The lyrics are quite directly that he put MDMA in her champagne, took her home, had sex with her, and she did not know that she had been drugged. That lyric is pretty rough. And I can guarantee there's not even one remotely like it in a song that you're going to give as an example here. Because it's not the norm to write about in this genre. I'm paraphrasing, but essentially, he didn't really give a fuck. Lil Wayne has so many lyrics that are offensive about women that are way too numerous to include. But I do think he deserves a mention for that jail bait ass line in about three years. Holla at me Miley Cyrus in the um, Every Girl song. Wait until the end of the video before you make your judgment, but my guess is the real problem you have with this is that Miley Cyrus is white. Tyga received a myriad of criticism for his song Stimulated, in which he basically brags about fucking his underage girlfriend, everyone's favorite wannabe black girl, Kylie Jenner. Ooh, someone mad Kylie got fuller lips and tighter braids than her. Meanwhile... Countless white rockers write songs that will be revered in history as classics, even though they glorify fucking teenagers. 
18 and 19 are teenagers, yet it's legal. Also, I'd like to note, at least they had consent. Stalking your lover with every breath she takes. You're an idiot. That song is about his ex-wife. Raping black slave women. <laughs> I really hope you're not talking about brown sugar. That's a... Uh... That's a song that's a giant metaphor about being a heroin addict. Or just date raping somebody. You you didn't listen to or read the lyrics of that song, did you? The date rape story is about a man that date rapes a woman and then is thrown in jail and raped by his cellmate, which the singer glorifies, just for the record. That's the point of the story. It's to say, you get what you get now, because you're a bad person. That was the point of the story. It doesn't glorify date rape, you psychotic, psychotic cunt. The bands that I'm going to talk a large amount of shit about should have been as heavily scrutinized, dragged, and a slew of, had a slew of think pieces written about them and their offensive lyrics towards women but they don't really face as much harsh criticism as black artists do. Oh shit, I get what this is. You're too young to remember the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, the early 90s. You're too young to remember the fact that white music did this already. A hundred thousand times white music did this with every new style of white music. We've had to defend against being actual Satan worshippers. But do go on about about the evils of the misogyny. You want to know why? And it's not to say they don't face any criticism. I mean, there are definitely some articles floating out there that talk about pop punk's misogyny, punk rock misogyny, indie rock misogyny. They're definitely floating around. That's definitely not the point. Yes, you can find those articles if you specifically type in the words punk rock, indie rock, and misogyny. You can find articles. Otherwise, not so much. And, ladies and gents, when you do find those articles, be prepared to laugh your asses off. They are amazingly funny. Poorly written, but amazingly funny. And I do understand that pop punk and indie rock, they're not... I mean, at one point, they were definitely, like, mainstream essentials to have, like, certain pop punk songs on the radio. Like, Fall Out Boy, My Coming Romance, Panic of the Disco. I would hear them on the radio a lot. Like, they were a pretty big fucking deal. Uh, yes, during which time their fan base were called suicidal, whiny, man-baby cutters. But, go on. But it wasn't always that big of a deal. So, uh, obviously this is also, you know, um, going hand-in-hand hand with, you know, what is popular and whatnot. And there are, you know, some pop-punk gangs that are popular right now. There will always be, like, at least a couple that are popular. I think part of the problem here is that you might actually judge music on its popularity. When music is popular, it is usually the by far lowest common denominator of music. When almost anything is absurdly popular, it tends to be the lowest common denominator of that thing. So all things being equal, the fact that rap is the most popular thing right now doesn't shock me. Um, is it anywhere near the extent of rappers? No, of course not. Of course not, because rap's the best music ever created by man. Ratchet ass hoe. But that's not the point. The point is that, you know, they don't receive as much criticism as rappers do or when uh, black artists do whenever they express themselves in a certain way. Ah, uh, yes. Black artists expressing themselves in certain ways. Shall we count these ways? Shall we peruse these ways and perhaps state them in this voice as opposed to with the backtracking and the rhythmic nature? So... We can see the kind of things she's dismissing offhand before we get to these terrible, misogynistic pop-punk songs. Such, such beautiful and melodic couplings, such as So, we could never be a couple, hon. Fuck love. All I got for hoes is hard dick and bubblegum. Bitches ain't shit but hoes and tricks. Lick these nuts and suck the dick. Once again, I gotta punch a bitch in her shit. I'm icy, bitch. Don't look at my wrist, because if you do, you might be blind, bitch. I know she like chocolate men. She got more niggas off than Cochran. 
You ain't no better because you don't be fucking rappers. You only fuck with actors. You still getting fucked backwards. My little sister's birthday, she'll remember me. For a gift, I had ten of my boys take her virginity. You know me, I smoke a bunt while I'm getting brain. Stick my finger in her butt while I'm getting brain. Yeah, I'm nasty, bitch. What? This is but a sampling of the music she is ignoring offhand as being expressing themselves. But, but that's fine. Do, do go on, dear. I'm sure that you have some equally horrendous lyrics for me, right? Um, just honestly, I, I, I just try Googling misogyny and pop punk. You get a few articles written about it, but nothing related or suggested at the bottom. That could perhaps actually be because the author struggled to find something to write about, but but no, I'm, I'm sure it has nothing to do with the actual content of the, the songs right now. In fact, when I googled Fall Out Boy Misogyny, I actually got a suggestion for Rihanna's Bitch Better Have My Money. Funny, when I searched it on Google, I got no such results. Have you considered perhaps the Google algorithm takes into account your past search history? Meanwhile, Googling misogyny and rap will get you a crap ton of links and even more suggestions at the bottom of the page. You know what? Fuck it. A couple more just for good measure. Hat is always forced, so the bitches call me gump. But compliment her tits, then it's off the humper. Fuck her in the hummer while I rape her. Then I put her in a slumber. When I met you last night, baby, before you opened up your gap, I had respect for you, lady, but now I take it all back. Cause you gave me all the pussy, then you even licked my balls. Also, essentially the entire song Big Pimpin'. Basically the entire song Big Pimpin'. Hip hop is a predominantly black genre. Black owned, pretty much black male saturated. No, no, no. It's predominantly white and Jewish man owned. It's predominantly black man written and performed. Conversely, pop punk is white male dominated. And if you ask me and other people whose articles are down below. Uh, don't worry, gents. I wouldn't deprive you of that. I'm linking all of them and I might even go through one of them for a video that I'll list as the addendum to this one. Because the people who participate in pop punk look like this as opposed to this, they can get away with pretty much the same attitudes towards women. That's your assertion. I've made the point of how rap has some very retrograde opinions of the behavior of females. Would you care to provide some, I don't know, maybe evidence or fucking examples of the same? Another thing to understand, if you want to get into the idea of this, is the nice guy syndrome. This is completely what drives, like, pop punk for the most part. Ah, uh, yes. The feminist belief that there cannot actually be nice people out there. There, there can only be nice women. Nice men don't exist. A nice man is just a, a man that's holding back all these evil things. The complete opposite of hip-hop's machismo and aggressive candor, the nice guy syndrome, is the idea that some guy who pines for the pretty girl deserves her simply on the grounds that he's nice. Look, I know that that confounds you as a black woman. I know you would prefer the firm pimp hand, so you should perhaps stay with the black men, no? Once again, this is your dichotomy, bitch, not mine. You know, he's probably not confident, he's self-deprecating, he's soft-spoken, he's not as boisterous as the popular guys, and he's into music or comic books or something like that that enables a, you know, a tight-knit uh, group of friends, or he's always by himself, or... She's mocking nerds now. She would prefer to get slapped in the mouth than deal with a man that reads comic books and treats her with some respect. And we wonder why the black community is having some fucking problems. You know, like he's, he's probably some dweeb who looks like Tobey Maguire, or he's a loner who hides in his basement playing video games and writing songs about his true love's hair and her blue eyes and... Oh, so you're a jealous racist cunt. That's what this is. You're mad none of those guys ever wanted you, in spite of the fact that you tried to fit in which you're going to admit a little later in this beautiful confessional you made me. You know, he's probably jerking her off to violent porn or something. 
<laughs> what? <laughs> what the fuck did you just say? You know, he's probably jerking her off to violent porn or something. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> oh, we're peeking into the mind of an absolute fucking lunatic here. You really want these to be bad guys because otherwise it means that you've rejected all of them in favor of thugs. That's what you that's what this is. He's a good guy. He's not going to call you a bitch. Well, luckily, I have absolutely no problem calling you an absolute harpe of a bitch. He's not gonna objectify you. Oh, no, he's not gonna do that. I don't... I don't want to objectify you. You're an angry black woman who essentially literally has a fucking bone in her nose. Why would I want to date you? He's not gonna sexually assault you. As you've well established that the rappers have absolutely no problem doing, and you've established that you prefer that. We've clarified you want to be raped by a pack of black men. He's, he's gonna put you on a pedestal, this beautiful white woman. There is the jealousy again. Look, it's not white women's fault that you're at the bottom of attractiveness scale. It's not technically your fault either. You're internalizing that. Put her on a pedestal, um... Treat her like a delicate queen, delicate queen, and write write songs about her hair and her the color of her eyes. And Seriously, that hair and eyes thing really bothers you, huh? And he'll cuddle you when you're sad, and and be with you forever and ever and ever and ever and ever, and have a bunch of kids together and live in like a beautiful house, and you know. The bitterness and the jealousy here is fucking palatable. You can physically feel it wash through the screen, can't you? She's so angry that she's going to die alone and sad. That makes her so angry. I'm going to die alone and sad, but at least I've come to terms with it. Fuck. All that shit. If you're into him. Jeez, you mean he requires emotional reciprocation. Fuck me. You mean he wants you to like him back. That's evil. That's pure evil. That's the root of evil. But if you're not into him, ho oh, ho ho, bitch, you just fucked up. The clapping, always the clapping for emphasis, Jesus. Because if he's not into you, he is going to choke you, crush you with his voice, stalk you until you change your mind, dissect you, lace your cigarettes with poison, wish you were dead, want you to bury yourself alive, lock you up so you can't leave. But they're nice guys! They're so sweet and cuddly and they just do that because they love me! I actually think I know some of the lyrics you were referring to in that, and the vast majority of them were not directed at the person. The vast majority of them were directed at someone that they saw as a competitor. The vast majority of them were directed at other men. No. I went through a phase when I was in high school. Here comes her confession. Here comes the root of all this bitterness. It's adorably sad, but sad nonetheless. We'll call it my anti-black snowflake phase. I went through this phase through middle and high school. Let's... Let's call it my anti-white, negro-loving phase. If you flinched, that's your fault. I listened to a lot of pop punk, and I sang my little 15-year-old heart out to a lot of these songs, completely oblivious to the fact that the lyrics were extremely fucked up. I listened to a lot of rap and hip-hop, and I sang my little 15-year-old heart out without realizing how disgusting some of these fucking lyrics were. I mean, 95% of the songs I was singing were glorifying criminality or degenerate behavior, but, but go on. Go on with the, the pop-punk criticism. And if I dated one of these weirdos, not that they would ever actually do that, but... <laughs> so bitter. Uh, I was going to do another reversal and say if I dated one of these ratchet hoes, but then I realized, A, that was, that was never a potentiality, and B... Holy shit, you're so hurt. If I did date one of these guys, and I broke their heart by doing some shit that, you know, you know they couldn't handle or whatever, or stayed, imagined some shit, basically, if it didn't go well, I'd probably be dismembered in a river somewhere, and they would write a poetic-ass song about my death. Using your exact goddamn logic, every black person that listens to rap music becomes a gang-banging, drug-dealing criminal. Is... This, a path you would like to tread upon, lovely. 
Is it? Is it really? Is this what you want to do? Also, the worst that would have happened is that person would have gone back to their quote-unquote basement, as you like to say, turned the music up really loud, and been sad. Because that's what that fucking music is for, you psychotic cunt. And then Mark Webb would direct the fucking music video. Here are just a few examples of how pop punk is just as fucking bad as rap when it comes to misogyny. First song we got on the list, Our Lady of Sorrows by My Chemical Romance. Woo, well that's one way to showcase a song. For the record, that's a song about a murder-suicide pact between two willing participants. Nikki FM by Hawthorne Heights. Oh, I'm outside of your window with my radio. A lyric that is a reference to one of the most iconic goddamn movies from the 80s. No One Else by Weezer. I want to Yes, a lyric about an insecure nerd who's finally venting the desire to be desired above other people. That's fucking evil. Evil, evil misogyny. Evil misogyny. There's a reason these tables are numbered by Panic at the Disco. You are so goddamn stupid. The intake of nitroglycerin was a known treatment for angina pectoris, or chest pain, heart pain. A female entry to the list, Misery Business by Paramore. Okay, I'm gonna pre-caption this one. Brace, guys, this is gonna be abrasive as fuck. Never change. What's a whore? You're nothing more. I'm sorry, that'll never change. And about- Hi, Haley, why? Proof that the identity politics has gone to the point where a female is good enough for her to consider herself, you know, equal to you, as long as you're a female. If you're a white male, however, fuck you, you dirty misogynistic pig. Make damn sure by taking back Sunday. Awesome. It's good that you have to choose a very specific part of that song to ignore the fact that it's about a woman abusing a man till he feels like he's less than her. But, but go on. And after everything you put me through, I should have fucking been to you! And I had to save, oh man, I had to save Fall Out Boy for last because they are the biggest repeat offenders. Great, now you're gonna make me defend Fallout Boy. Thanks, bitch. There's probably- no, I know there's actually way more than this, but these are the few that have stuck with me to this day. First off, Chicago is so two years ago. You want apologies, girl, you might hold your breath Until your breathing stops forever, forever the a person using a fairly standard metaphor that means I'm not going to issue you an apology. You'll shoot your eye out. I want this year's for you to dedicate your last breath to me before you bury yourself alive. Ma'am, are, are you secretly a Hebrew Israelite? Because I've noticed this pattern with them as well, as they don't understand metaphor. Bury yourself alive is a metaphor, dear. I know this is hard for you. I know your brain isn't wired this way. But this is called art. So 
won't take my advice You never wanted the nice boys anyway You just said you don't want the nice boys He's right, dear Pros and cons of breathing Only a complete lunatic could take the lyrics I wish I could hate you half as much as I hate myself to be misogyny against the person he's speaking about. You're an ideological nutball. Sugar, we're going down. This Your editing is amazingly creative because you managed to cut out the line where the man in the song is essentially being cuckolded by his girlfriend. The man in the song says, Isn't it messed up that I wish I was him? I'm just a notch in your bedpost. You're just a line in this song. Do you not understand the exchange here, dear? Do you not understand to whom the power is being attributed? It's not the man in this situation. Love. The Grand Theft Autumn video. The Grand Theft Autumn video. The Grand Theft Autumn video. In this video, this guy, this nice guy, is in love with this girl, his crush or whatever, some cute little rosy cheeked white girl. Your desire to be an attractive white woman notwithstanding, do you have anything else to add? Your jealousy is starting to make me sick to my fucking stomach. And he takes his video camera with him and he fucking films her in her house while she's asleep. And when she wakes up, she sees that he was fucking videotaping her in her fucking window. And instead of getting mad and calling the cops like you're supposed to do, she puts on a cute little outfit, runs out to his van, makes out with him, and then he's filming her as this whole thing happens. I'm glad that you're so very careful with those stones in your glass house because I'm sure that it won't take me 30 seconds and a half-functioning memory to Google and find a clip of... Rap, a camcorder, and women, and the way that they behave in front of camcorders. Jeez, and that misogyny comes from the very root of rap culture. One of the earliest fucking popular rap songs. What? It's okay, dear. I've come to realize long ago now that you're very ill-informed and easily confused, so your befuddlement here isn't exactly shocking. And as if that one didn't make my blood boil the most... So then we have fucking my heart is the worst kind of weapon. Rather ones that just don't care. Cause I know that you're in between or somewhere. Next to heartbeats where you shouldn't be asleep. Now we'll teach you a lesson for keeping secrets from me. Tell it did you hear the news? I get to sick to and got you on this stage, not as eloquent as I may ever met. I first noticed this pattern with the Hebrew Israelites and their inability to understand that portions of religious text were metaphor. This young lady doesn't seem to understand that the word dissect has more than one meaning, as does gut. You see, again, and you're ignoring the idea that the reason that this man is so angry is because the woman he was with was a cheating slime ball and he caught her. Let's just ignore all the details there, right? Tell me out the jokes on you we saw you all the wound. 
I mean, truly, what is it about some people that makes them incapable of processing metaphor? Ow, fuck. Since I'm a kind of kid that can't let anything go, but you wouldn't know a good thing if it came up and spit your throat. Whoa! You retarded cunt. He also says in the beginning of this song that he was dragging lakes for the corpses of his past mistakes. Do you think he's actually been culling fucking lakes for bodies? Or do you think maybe he's speaking in metaphor? Why are you so retarded? How are you allowed out on your own? Where is your goddamn handler? You mistake of a human being. Every line is plotted and designed. Leave you standing on your bedroom windows, legend. Everyone else that it hits, that it gets to, is nothing more than collateral damage to get set. <laughs> How is that even misogyny? He's actually saying he's willing to let many innocents die just to watch you jump off your fucking window ledge, because that's how much he hates specifically the one person that this song is aimed at. Oh my fucking god! And then to top it all the fuck off! This does not help make your points. Anybody can clap. It is not a skill. The cherry on top is the slut shaming. Luckily, there's no slut shaming in rap. They just fuck them and call them sluts to their face and pat them on the heads and say, just keep being good little hoes so I can keep using you. That's much better, right? Yes, we have established that she is a whore and should perhaps learn to say no occasionally if she intends to be in a long-term committed relationship. Now, I'm not in any way saying that you have to completely stop liking and listening to your favorite artist. That's good, my queen, as I surely would have bent to your will simply by this video. You don't have that kind of control in the world, you psychotic, dumb bitch. A lot of them are problematic. Does it mean you are for listening to them? No, of course not. You only, in my opinion, become problematic when you defend its obvious harmful effects after someone points it out. Well, luckily, even trying as hard as you possibly could, you couldn't manage to point out a single harmful effect at all, least of all even imply that harmful effects were incoming. You're just too dumb to understand metaphor, and half the time wrong about the target of the statement. Willful ignorance is a real thing. Oh, we know, baby doll, we just watched your whole fucking video. Willful ignorance is all you are able to do. You can point the truth out with statistics, research, historical evidence. None of which she did, by the way. She just sat here and talked shit, as the title implied. Actual documents and direct quotes. But if someone doesn't want to recognize it, or if they deliberately and vehemently... Vehemently. ...defend the harmful rhetoric, you're not being problematic. In conclusion, the end. I can say without a shadow of a doubt that this is the last video I will make with this person, so in one way, it is the end. On the second layer, I sincerely hope it is the end insofar as perhaps this individual will watch this video and realize that they are a rambling goddamn lunatic who should find something better to do with their time than insult other people's musical selections solely on made-up attacks on sexism. What a bizarre concept, especially as a form of apologetics for rap culture. It's not working, and anybody with a functioning brain that has two cells that can still touch can see that. That's all for me today, ladies and gents. I'd say I hope you enjoyed, but frankly, I have a funny feeling there's no way in hell anybody got through this with any modicum of enjoyment left in their body. So instead... Thanks for getting through this with me. I'll see you later. Good luck, stay safe, and goodbye.